You've got to be kidding me, having a baby with the guy you broke up with. Is it because you can't get over me? Are you hoping that by having a child, you'll somehow keep me in your life? That's absurd. Looking back, breaking up was absolutely the right decision. If I'd stayed with that daydreamer, I wouldn't have the happiness I have now. Today, I want to reflect on my unforgettable past and the drama of its reversal. My name is Amy. I'm a 53-year-old housewife who finds joy in leisurely housework while watching the morning news. When I was 38, I was living peacefully with my husband, Keith. But around that time, a subtle unease began to settle in our home. Keith started responding to me with indifference, almost dismissively. When I tried to continue a conversation, he would cut me off, saying he was too busy. It felt like I was being ignored and treated harshly. He hadn't always been like this. He used to be a chatterbox, always trying to make me laugh with his jokes. This sudden change was so abrupt that I wondered if I had done something wrong, but nothing came to mind. One day, I noticed a faint lipstick mark on the back of a shirt Keith had put in the laundry. He had come home late that day, claiming he had to work overtime. I couldn't imagine anyone at his all-male workplace leaning against him with lipstick on. Could it be a woman? Naturally, I suspected infidelity, but a single lipstick stain was hard to prove. He could easily make up an excuse like bumping into someone. I decided I needed more evidence and started paying closer attention to Keith's behavior. Ironically, my increased vigilance led to a mountain of proof. For instance, Keith would always get up to use the bathroom around 2 a.m. when I was asleep. I had never doubted him before, but it seemed he was making calls to a woman during those bathroom visits. There were also traces of what looked like lipstick on his handkerchief and some suspicious stains on his suits. The clincher was when I borrowed Keith's car after a long time and found a tinted lip balm. If Keith had been using tinted lip balm, that would be one thing but this seemed like irrefutable evidence. It was our 10th wedding anniversary, the frustration of having my husband stolen by another woman, the loneliness of not wanting to be alone, and the rekindled love I felt for Keith left me wondering, is it really impossible to make amends? Is there no way to revive something once it's cooled off? When I found out about the pregnancy, I thought, is this a gift from God? We didn't have any children and perhaps the monotony of our relationship contributed to Keith's infidelity. Maybe this pregnancy could change things. With that hope in my heart, I clung to the possibility that it might somehow fix everything. When I told my husband about my pregnancy, his response was shocking. Give me a break, he said dismissively. That's just troublesome. Let's break up. I couldn't believe my ears. Looking back, I suppose I was naive to think he might come back to me. It's rare for a man who's been unfaithful to return. Life doesn't always work out like a TV show or a movie. Back then, I believed in our love and thought that surely we could reconcile. How could you say something like that? I cried. It's your baby. His response was cold. Even a child would be better off without a father like me. You've realized that, haven't you? Seeing him smirk, my heart sank. I had been pretending not to know about his affair, hoping that once the baby arrived, things would go back to normal. But now, it felt like I'd been pushed off a cliff. I thought that if the affair came to light, the tension between us would drive him away for good. But that was a miscalculation. I had hoped he would catch me in the act, but he never said a word. I was exhausted from waiting. I had been waiting for him to say, You can't be serious. Let's divorce. But instead, he simply added, Seriously, don't make this harder for me. Are you joking? I asked, my voice trembling. I wouldn't lie about something this serious. He smirked again and said, I have a cute 24-year-old girlfriend now. I don't need a 38-year-old who's going to gain weight from pregnancy. He then added with a cruel laugh, If your figure goes pear-shaped, you're out. I couldn't muster a single laugh. Just take this, he said, handing me the divorce papers. I'll pay alimony or whatever. Just sign quickly. For three days, I cried continuously, unable to stop. Eventually, when he stopped coming home altogether, I signed the divorce papers. Five years have passed since then. The fear of growing older and being alone was daunting, but fortunately, I found solace in remarrying my old friend Troy, who had also been through a divorce. Together, we've been living modestly but happily with our child. Troy's ex-wife had also cheated on him, and like me, he was a survivor of a painful divorce. Our shared experiences have made living together comfortable and understanding. 
Every year on our anniversary, Roy reserves a table at a fancy restaurant and gives me thoughtful gifts for my birthday. I feel truly cherished. With these thoughts in mind, we celebrated our wedding anniversary again this year at our usual upscale restaurant. As we were enjoying our meal, I heard a voice that made my stomach churn. Wow, it's Amy, said my ex-husband who had just emerged from the restroom. I couldn't hide my disgust. The unexpected encounter with my ex-husband was a tragedy. What are you doing here? I asked, barely masking my irritation. Just a business dinner, he replied with a bored look. Not like you. He glanced over at me, then at our child, and sneered. You had that kid with the guy you broke up with. That's disgusting. He reached out and grabbed our child's hand, scrutinizing him with a cruel smirk. Seriously, you've got to be kidding. Having a kid with the guy you left, is this your way of clinging to me? Did you think having a child would somehow make it harder for you to cut ties with me? His grin widened as he spun the child around, clearly enjoying the distress he was causing. Our child's face contorted in fear and he began to cry. Papa, Mama, help. I'm being taken by a stranger. Stay there, my ex said coldly. I'm your papa, your mom is right there. You're just as stupid as she is. The sight of him, relishing in the pain he was causing, was a painful reminder of the past I thought I had moved beyond. Just as he finished speaking, a man over six feet tall appeared behind him and grabbed my ex's arm firmly. That child is mine, the tall man said, his voice steady and authoritative. I couldn't help but chuckle at my ex's surprised expression. Oh, this guy's Amy's new husband, my ex remarked, though I didn't respond to his question. I don't know what you were talking about, the tall man said, but you can't make a child crying and get away with it. He glared at my ex and a tattoo peeked out from under his sleeve. My ex's face went pale at the sight of it. Hey, ah, uh, Amy, stop your husband, my ex stammered. That woman is not my wife, the tall man replied. My ex looked stunned, glancing back and forth between me, the tall man, and the still crying child. Wait, then who's this kid? he asked. Before my ex could react, the tall man had secured his arms behind his back. This man is acting suspiciously, my ex shouted. Someone call a staff member. There's a man here harming my kid. The commotion in the restaurant drew attention. I thought, what a way to ruin an anniversary, but I couldn't help but smirk. It seemed the day had turned out better than expected, if only by accident. Wait staff, over here. I called out. I saw this man forcibly grabbing the child's arm. My ex's mouth fell open. Amy, what's going on? I really don't understand. I told him I'm not his wife. That child isn't mine and certainly not yours. But he was right behind you, my ex protested. You were blocking the restroom entrance. The child couldn't get in because of you. He was just following his dad. What? My ex was flustered. You probably enjoy making fun of people, but you really need to stop jumping to conclusions. I added, perhaps you should be more aware of your surroundings. What? Shut up. I don't need to hear that from you. My ex snapped. Of course, my valuable words probably wouldn't reach someone as suspicious as you. I told you I'm not suspicious, the tall man replied. Oh, really? A man who approaches a random child, grabs their arm, and then starts speaking in baby talk, saying, I'm your daddy, isn't suspicious at all? You've got to be kidding me. That's because you had the nerve to say to the woman in front of you, your mom is over there, I said with a smirk. Do you still think we're a couple? My ex-husband Keith turned bright red and yelled, Stop messing with me. As Keith's shouts grew louder, the tall man tightened his grip on him. Ouch. Hey, mister, let me go. I'm innocent. Innocent? I replied. You undeniably made our son cry. That's a misunderstanding. Keith protested. Before he could continue, I cut him off. The fact is, you misunderstood and laid your hands on someone else's child. Keith glared at me and said, you? You? I said in a deliberately cute voice, which seemed to irritate him even more. I've been glared at by a suspicious person. Scary. Keith tried to wriggle free from the tall man's grip, but to no avail. You're so deluded if you think we're still a couple. Or maybe you just can't forget about me, I taunted, repeating the accusation Keith had made earlier. As expected, Keith's rage grew. Sensing the danger, the tall man threw him to the ground and straddled his back. You really thought you could escape from me? While the man's intimidation was light, the tattoo peeking from under his sleeve added an air of genuine menace. Keith must have realized this could be the end for him. Hey Amy, it was a misunderstanding. Keith cried out. A misunderstanding. 
I replied. Pulling on a stranger's child's arm is not a misunderstanding at all. Keith's pleading, half-crying voice echoed as he attempted to justify himself. I thought it was my kid. It was clear that Keith was desperate, but his excuses only deepened the gravity of the situation. I burst into laughter, claiming he's your kid when you hadn't even acknowledged him or paid any child support. Really? Oh, Keith replied, looking confused. Did we ever talk about recognition or child support after our divorce? Keith, I wouldn't have expected you to acknowledge him even if you had been contacted, I said, and that's why you never reached out to me, right? Don't be ridiculous. Why would I do that when I'm raising a child on my own? I'd have hunted you down for support if it were necessary. Ah, but here's the thing, I continued. The pregnancy test turned out to be a false positive. When I went to the OBGYN, they told me I wasn't pregnant which solidified my decision to sign the divorce papers. During those three days while we were discussing divorce and Keith wasn't coming home, it's true, I spent a lot of time crying. But I knew I could have finalized the divorce without understanding the full situation, especially with the potential for a child involved. So, I went to the OBGYN first. Even though we weren't officially divorced yet, I wanted to sort out issues like alimony, child support, and future living expenses. I was willing to endure hardships if it would benefit my child. However, the OBGYN found no signs of pregnancy, but instead discovered a tumor in my ovaries. While recovering from surgery for the tumor, I shared a hospital room with the mother of my current husband. I had known both his parents since childhood as my current husband and I were old friends. When he came to visit his mom, we reunited and grew close again. At that time, I thought of my pregnancy scare as a divine sign meant to ensure things would work out with my current husband. However, it turned out to be a blessing in disguise. It led me to realize that breaking up with my ex-husband was indeed the right decision. It also gave me the chance to find someone who genuinely cares for me and led to the early detection of an illness. Even though I had one of my ovaries removed last year, I am grateful for how things turned out. I gave birth to a child with my current husband, and despite the hardships I face, everything has turned out to be a series of blessings for me. Seeing my ex-husband's reaction upon learning all this, he paled and muttered, No way. I was dumped by her. It was hard not to laugh at his stunned realization. Obviously, a young woman wouldn't want to be with an aging man like him. At that moment, a police officer arrived, apparently summoned by someone from the restaurant. My ex-husband received a stern warning from the officer and avoided further trouble by sincerely apologizing to the child's family once the misunderstanding was cleared. The reprimand from the police seemed to have hit him hard. He even came to apologize to me personally. Although he didn't know where I lived, he managed to find my parents' home and express his regrets to my mother. I made a terrible mistake, he admitted. I was wrong. Seeing him like this, aging, rejected, and alone seemed to have broken his spirit. He appeared to be struggling with the loneliness of having no one to turn to. But despite his apology, I really couldn't care less. I continued to ignore him. If we hadn't run into each other that day, I would have long forgotten about him. When we crossed paths, my current husband had noticed I'd been away from our table for a while and came to check on me in the restroom. He decided to stay in the shadows, thinking this might be my chance to confront my ex. I would have stepped in if anything escalated, but the man restraining my ex was incredibly strong. Apparently, he was a returnee and had been a football team captain in America, which explained his impressive strength. I wouldn't have stood a chance. I was genuinely scared, thinking he was some kind of tough guy. Hearing this made me laugh along with him. I admit, back when we got divorced, I wasn't strong. Despite everything, I simply followed through with the divorce as he requested, receiving a modest alimony payment from him and his lover. Life isn't a fairy tale, so expecting a massive alimony settlement was unrealistic. I didn't have the strength to resist back then. But I finally found my voice and stood my ground with my ex-husband, which helped me become truly strong. Now, I can face my husband and my child without any guilt. Coincidentally, the day of my marriage anniversary this year also marked a new beginning for me. My husband has since become a freelance architect and doubled his income, allowing me to quit my part-time job and fully embrace my role as a stay-at-home mom. Our slightly rebellious daughter might grumble when I ask her to do things, but she quietly helps out when I don't ask. Only my husband and I know about her loving nature. Though I had a late-life pregnancy and only have one daughter, our family, 
along with our two dogs, makes for a lively and joyful household. Even with just one ovary, I managed to get pregnant and give birth at an advanced age with my current husband. I can't help but think there's some kind of fate at play here. The dream of marrying someone special, which I cherished since childhood, came true in an unexpected way through remarriage. These are just some dreamy thoughts I entertain from time to time. And with that, I cherish the everyday happiness that is anything but ordinary.